Hi, this is Joseph Kraft. I am the Doing Philosopher and I'm the founder of Thinkadoo.com. That's T-H-I-N-K-A-E-D-O.com. Um, check it out. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about ethics. Uh, now, philosophy divides into two branches. They are metaphysics or what is, you know, questions about ultimate reality and the nature of time and being and those sorts of things and questions of what should be or what we should do those are that's ethics that's what we're going to be talking about today um, so before we get started if you would uh, click the like button if you like this video chances are you have friends that would like it too and I would appreciate it and your friends would appreciate it uh, so like it share it pin it do whatever it is you do so uh, let's get started ethics uh, breaks down over the ages that people have answered the question of what we should do different ways. The, uh, the oldest way and the first that we're going to be talking about is called divine command theory. And that just means that what is good or what you should do is what God says. Uh, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, the problem is that you run into all sorts of questions about whose God says or who gets to determine what God says? Who, you know, who interprets the Holy Scripture? Who is the prophet that we should listen to? There are conflicting prophets. Uh, the, the classic textbook example of this is the Crusades. Uh, during the Crusades, you had uh, the, uh, the commander of the Muslim army, Saladin. Uh, he uh, executed the Templar Knights and the Hospitallers after the Battle of Hatim. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. Hatim or Hatem. I can't remember now. Uh, he, but he, he had them executed, uh, presumably thinking that, that that was God's will. Then along came Richard the Lionheart, the English king, and he executed 3,000 Muslim prisoners, presumably thinking that was God's will. And then Salah Adin, again, then in, re in retaliation for the Muslims that were killed, executes his prisoners in Damascus. So this is an example of, of two men, uh, both thinking they were doing God's will, both probably would agree with divine command theory, obviously on very different sides of the spectrum, or of, of, of what they thought was God's will. Um, now, uh, the, the next theory that I want to get into, moving along pretty quickly here, is uh, virtue ethics, and this started with Aristotle. No, I'm sorry, it didn't start with Aristotle, but Aristotle was the best, the classic example, if you will, of, of a, a virtue ethics philosopher. Virtue ethics doesn't talk about the action that's good, it's about the character that's good. So, I'm a good person uh, because I have good character, because, uh, because I'm virtuous, because I'm wise, or because I'm brave, or because I'm just or prudent. These are the things that make me good. It's not so much about the actions, it's internal, it's me. So uh, the, the classic example of this is Homer and his warriors. So the, the Homeric warriors, uh, you have, you have um, uh, uh, Hector and Achilles. They were both good because they were brave. Never mind the fact that, that they, they uh, fought to the death in single combat. Um, King Priam and Ulysses were both virtuous. They were both good because they were wise. Never mind that Ulysses used his wisdom to trick King Priam and sack the city. That doesn't come into it. The, 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 the focus is on their character. So that's virtue ethics. That's Aristotle. Um, moving right along you get to uh, deontology. This is, this is duty-based ethics. This moves out of the realm of, of uh, what is good for me and moves it to the external, to what you do outside of yourself. It's not about your character anymore. Uh, the, the champion of, of virtue, oh, I'm sorry, of deontology, of duty ethics, the most important philosopher is Immanuel Kant. Uh, Kant came up with what he called the categorical imperative. That is, what it is your duty to do categorically, without question, and what it's your duty to not do. So what Kant would say was your duty to do would be to always treat other people as means and never as an ends. That is, uh, um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, as ends and never as means. So ends are uh, 
the goals that you work towards. The means are the way you get there. So you, you're never to use people as merely a way to get to a means, to get to an end. You're always to treat them as ends in and of themselves. It's give them a certain amount of dignity. Uh, the, the other thing that, that Immanuel Kant said was that you must always, it is your duty to only act in such a way that you could will that your actions be universal law. That means that anybody else acting under similar circumstances would have to do the same thing. So uh, this is, you, you could say, if you're trying to get away with a lie, then you have to think, well, is it permissible? Could I say that universally I could will that everybody under these circumstances would lie? The answer, of course, would have to be no, because if everybody lied under those circumstances, then everybody would know that everybody was lying and the lie wouldn't be effective. So lying for Immanuel Kant could never be acceptable, at least not under those circumstances. Uh, then the next uh, theory of ethics is utilitarianism. This is the most commonly cited theory today. Uh, uh, not that people uh, will cite it outright, but that they'll appeal to, to the idea of it. And it's, it's that if you have two uh, paths that you can go, you have two options, which one do you do, A or B? Well, utilitarianism says you have to do the one that will bring the most happiness to the greatest number of people. That's the right action, and the other action would then be the wrong action. Uh, the champions of, of utilitarianism would be Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. Those are the names you need to know if you're taking a, uh, an ethics test on this. Jeremy Bentham, John Stuart Mill. So uh, utilitarianism then is, it sounds great, you know, do, the, do what's, what brings the most happiness to the most people. But you get into all sorts of problems with how do you know what brings the most happiness to the most people? Do, certain, do all people count equally? Does all happiness count equally? Um, and you get into problems like, so say that the, uh, the chairman of the power company is going to turn the power off unless you beat a child. Nobody's going to know, but you just have to beat the child every day and he'll keep the power running and it'll keep the economy going. It'll keep you know, the people on ventilators at the hospital will stay alive. Everybody will be happy. Nobody will have any problems except for that one little child. Well, to most people, this would be a repugnant notion. Certainly you wouldn't do that. But it's it, in, in pure utilitarianism, the only person that suffers from that is the child and maybe you, the, the beater, but that would be the right actions. The other problem with utilitarianism is that you can never really know if an action is the right action until you see its consequences. It's, it's, a, it's also called consequentialism. It's based on the consequences. And finally, you can never really know that it was the right action because you, if you chose path A, you can never see the consequences of path B. And so you can never know that you really brought more happiness to more people that way. Um, so that is ethics in a nutshell. That is how to cheat on an ethics exam. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, check out the website, thinkado.com. I'll put a link below. Uh, like it, share it. Let me know in the comments what you want to hear next. And I appreciate you watching. Thanks very much.